My name is Kenny Schachter, and I've been in the art world in various capacities for over three decades. I've sold stuff at galleries. I've sold stuff at auction. And my largest success as an artist was in NFTs. When I found out about NFTs four years ago, what immediately drew them drew me to the notion of non-fungible tokens. And I probably taught the first university class on NFTs. I just wrote a book on NFTs, co-authored with a scholar from Cambridge. I couldn't care less about NFTs. I couldn't care less about anything other, like I said initially, my family and art in general. People think that NFTs are art. The NFT is a smart contract. 90% of the time, unless the art is on chain, which in which case the art is not in Norway, it's nowhere. It's on a series of parallel decentralized uh, computers. That's the essence of the blockchain. But 90 plus percent of the time, an NFT is just a contract that points to a file. I created a series of 10,000 NFTs myself, and I have to pay storage fees every single month or my NFTs will disappear. So if I die and don't make provisions for the storage to be paid on a service called Pinata, you will have a smart contract with a nice blank rectangle in your wallet. I still believe wholeheartedly, even though the market had a tremendous setback down 90%, I went from selling my art from for twenty thousand dollars at a high, but I sold like I mean I've sold ten thousand of one inexpensive series that adds up quick enough to like I was selling the same art I sold for twenty thousand for ten dollars or fifty dollars or a hundred dollars, and I have to say I derived the same satisfaction with the sale selling to another human being that wanted to somehow coexist with my art. The price means nothing. It's this kind of connection that you make with another person that will spend their hard-earned money and God knows it's as hard to make ten dollars as a hundred dollars and to have someone who wants to make that leap of faith and join forces and 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 have this relationship is an extraordinary thing. Art obviously still would exist in a vacuum as art per se, but it's yeah, it's relationship based, which is extraordinarily significant aspect of the whole dynamic of what art is. So for me, NFTs, technology, all of that stuff, they're all tools. Sometimes if an artist uses a smart contract or the blockchain as the building block for what they're actually creating, then NFTs can be art in and of itself, as could AI. AI is not a threat to artists. It's the same way artists use scissors, only more advanced, more not even more advanced, it's just different, but it's just why not use everything at your fingertips to explore anything that you feel like doing as long as you're not hurting someone. One great thing about NFTs are they enable artists to have a future stake in the resale of their work. That's great, but I always think it's such a leap of faith or such a commitment to buy someone's artwork. I don't even stake a royalty in my work anymore. I don't even claim a copyright in my creative output. If you want to copy me, go to it. I showed my first digital animation in 1993. I made my first computer printed work in 1994. There's an artist who just died in the past couple of months, um, Vera Molnar, she was 99. She, like Herbert Franca and Gottfried Jaeger and various other artists, employed computers in the creation of artworks in the 50s. Artworks, art, artists are opportunistic animals. Artists grab everything and anything they can, whether it's owned by someone else, espoused by another artist, in the ether. You could frequently go to artists in various countries and go to different studios and find artists inadvertently making the same works. Anyway, for me, what drew me instantly, I gave a lecture for a thousand people during COVID at the New School for Social Research, which is on YouTube. And it, I personally helped to onboard literally thousands of people through my writing and teaching. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but at the time when the market was really stronger than it is today, but it'll come back, I helped 
I've been told, I've had feedback that it enabled, and NFTs in general, not me, but NFTs enabled millions of creatives to access a market which had been completely shut down to them. What drew me to NFTs was not the smart contract, not where all the the the, ad, the advances in computational practice, not the decentralized web of parallel computing, where no one computer or company can be responsible for the preserving of the works. I like the notion of a trust-free contract where you can buy and sell stuff without an intermediary all digitally. I just like the, the theoretical notion of the blockchain and what, what could be the impact for artists like myself. So as soon as I found out about it, I thought this is a way to sell art. It's the first thing in literally like hundreds of years that conveyed a new fundamental system to buy and sell art without relying on the typical gatekeepers. I mean, a gallery today in 2024 is no different from the first commercial galleries a few hundred years ago. There's no difference. It's like a bunch of old white guys sitting around a table in Lloyd's of London Insurance Company in the UK in the 1700s. It's the same sort of two people shaking hands or making a deal over to buy it all work. And I love the idea. <clears throat> it's a revolution that art could be made, art could be sold, acquired, without these very limiting, reductive infrastructure. My whole career has been railing against, like I said, the hypocrisies. So for me, NFTs were a way for artists to wrestle back some of the basic powers of being able to take control of their own destiny. One of the most significant consistencies throughout my role in the art world has been to help facilitate opportunities for other people, whether it was through my curatorial projects, through my writing, through helping to promote blockchain usage for artists. I've always been really interested in a, learning, B, doing, and C, sharing. And that's probably sums up my life in, in the, short, the, the shortest nutshell explanation you'll get from me during the course of our relationship. <laughs>